All right, this is Brian Goulet. Rachel will be joining me here in just a minute. Uh, for Right Time at 9, this is our live weekly broadcast that we do uh, from the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. Uh, this week, we are just kind of catching up from being off for a couple of weeks. Last week, we had just a crazy, crazy experience. Um, Rachel was sick. Joseph was sick. Ellie was sick. All with kind of different things and that were kind of overlapping, and it was really just basically total misery for an entire week. Ellie ended up being hospitalized for over staying overnight for one night and that was terrifying, but we got through it and everybody's okay and we're fine and it's no big deal, but um, it was a pretty interesting week. And now we're coming back. Um, we have at least one person gone from our shop all week. So we're a little short staffed. We had ink drop to get out today. We got it out. Um, the ink drop theme, which I realized we never really officially posted, I was gonna talk about it. Um... Oh, she's gonna show it. Okay, Rachel's dressing up Ellie to show our ink drop theme. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so we'll announce the theme here just in a minute. I was going to announce it during right time last week, which is typically what we do is try and announce it like the week before the drop goes out um, on right time. But we ended up having to cancel. And then I just never really got my act together to kind of announce it just in a regular blog post. Um, but we'll go ahead and get that out of the way right now. And then we'll kind of announce it, you know, on the blog tomorrow along with this video. But <clears throat> Ink Drop is out. Um, we got some cool colors in this one. Um, I am excited about some of the colors. We have some really, really nice ones that I think will be very pleasing to a lot of people. So it'll be interesting to see what everybody thinks. Um, and we're in the planning stages for next month and several months in the future. So we're just having lots of ink drop fun right now. Um, and we did include a little extra surprise in this month's ink drop. I won't say anything what it is, but it's a little bonus thing that's actually not pen related at all. We just kind of threw in a little extra something for you. So um, it'll be just something kind of fun. But um, let's see here. What else? I don't want to dive in too much until Rachel gets in here. Ah. See how she does. Yeah, we'll see if Ellie behaves or if she starts protesting. Hey there. <laughs> okay. Here's our little hairy girl. <laughs> and here's our theme. <laughs> there you go. Our theme is not the most creatively named, but it's Valentine's Day. It's a fairly appropriate thing. There's really not much else going on in February. I mean, there's like, you know, Martin Luther King Day and stuff, but that doesn't really lend itself to fountain pen inks very well. So we went with Valentine's Day. So we have some Valentine's Day related inks and uh, Ellie here is dressed for the occasion. <laughs> oh, boy. It could be an interesting broadcast here, but... This is what you get with the, the whole family. So, um, <laughs> swing her up. We got a little baby swing we can put her in. You might be able to hear the swing in the background, but I guess it's better than hearing crying. This is our life, people. You're in our living room, so you're kind of. This is kind of what you're getting at nine o'clock at night. Oh yeah, President's Day, Groundhog Day. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess Groundhog Day Brown, but I mean. Yeah, we could do that. Maybe we'll do that next year or something. <laughs> we'll see. President's Day. Uh, I don't know what what president what what presidents inks would we do. I don't really know. Red, white, and blue or something. There's diamond presidential blue. That would be a pretty obvious one. Hey there, baby girl. Man, she's so awake. What's that? I keep talking. Okay. Well, let me pull up the uh, let me pull up the thing here, the post for today with all the topics on it. Okay, so we got several things to talk about. Some, it's basically new products is what we had to talk about. We haven't had new products too much in the last month or so. Um, the one thing that we did have last week was the Twisby uh, color demonstrators and the italic nibs. So, the uh, one thing I want to say about the Twisby italic nibs is they are pretty awesome. I had set my expectations pretty low, to be honest with you, because... When it comes to italic nibs, I tend to be a little bit picky. And 
you know, the Lamy italic nibs are pretty good, but not not everything I want them to be. And so I was kind of expecting. Gosh, she's really loud, isn't she? <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what to do, honey. <laughs> Unless you put her in the uh, car seat in the other room, or if she happens to fall asleep. I should might settle down. She likes to voice her opinion. But anyway. Yeah, I really can't concentrate on two things at once, as you can see. I mean, my daughter's crying. Who can who can lead a broadcast when your daughter's crying? But anyway, I'll try. Should I just go in the other room, Rachel, or something, or what? You can go in the other room. I don't... Oh, wait. Maybe she'll settle down. Yeah, just bear with us for a couple of minutes. She'll settle right down, okay? Forget, I for, forgive me, everyone, in the audio portion of the podcast here. <laughs> yeah, it's not so easy to edit this out. But anyway, I'm just going to keep talking. So as far as um, the Twisbees go, the italic nibs, I had very low expectations. I, had, I was thinking they would be really stiff and the flow would be okay but not awesome. But I have to be really honest that it kind of blew me away. Um, I did a post on uh, Monday about the Twisby Italics, and it really, it was kind of just an impromptu thing. I really, I really wasn't planning to do anything, but it was, I was so impressed with how it performed that I really just wanted to get it, you know, get my feelings, my initial findings out there. So I'm really impressed with the Twisby Italic, and of course I almost didn't want to say that because... Nobody, <laughs> because nobody can find them anywhere. I really don't know what to do here. Is it? Is this crying really bothering you guys? I'm really sorry. She's like, oh, no, maybe. It's like she could go at any second. Anyway. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys are fine with it. Um, yes, so the Twisby Italics, I... It really kind of blew me away, and I've used both of them now. I actually did the did the the writing samples for the nib nook, so I will be putting those up somewhat soon. Um, for I did the the writing samples for the custom 823 and for the Twisby Italic nibs, because um, those are all new things that are currently not in the nib nook. And um, the Twisby Italics really kind of blew me away, both of them, but especially the 1.1. The 1.5 is you know, wider and not necessarily as usable in your daily writing. Um, if you can, if you have some space to write really large, then you can do some really cool stuff with the 1.5. But the 1.1 is actually small enough where you can use it somewhat in your daily writing. Um, maybe not if you're ruling a smaller like six or seven millimeter, but if it's like eight millimeter or more, you're gonna love that 1.1. So it's uh, <clears throat> really pretty awesome nibs and. I know everybody's frustrated, not everybody. Some of you actually got some of these Twisby Italics, but a lot of people are frustrated because they've been in such short supply. And I think now that people are starting to get them, you're going to see reviews of those nibs out there and it's gonna really um, get everybody excited about them. Hey, Rachel's back. For now, we'll see. <laughs> you're gonna, it's gonna get everybody really excited about the Italics. Um, but don't fret, there are gonna be more coming in the next couple of weeks. Like two to three weeks, I'd say. Yeah, and, and the quantities are supposed to be plentiful. Uh, supposed Twisby, to be. Twisby yeah. just completely underestimated how popular they would be. Um, we didn't get nearly as many as we even wanted. Um, and now that they are out and we know how awesome they are, um, I think demand's just going to keep going up. So. Mhm. Mm but it's it's I mean for twenty twenty dollars it's well worth the nib. And we're even told that the clear five forty will be available. With the italic nib on it, correct? That's, that's the rumor. I that's the rumor. I haven't confirmed it directly with Twisby to know if they will truly be available in that two to three week with the next shipment. Um, that's what I've heard, but I, I want to confirm it from the source before we put it on our site. Yeah. Especially if there's any price difference or anything, you know, I'd, I'd want to know that. Yes, definitely. Um, as far as the Twisby color demonstrators go, I actually didn't bring any of them home with me to be able to show them. Not that the color accuracy on this camera is that great anyway, but I can at least talk through them. You can look at the pictures on gulepens.com of the Twisby Italics. 
uh, or sorry, of the Twisby color demos. Sorry, I'm really, really trying to. Enough. I know. She's just protesting. She'll yeah. fall asleep very soon. She's tired. She's just, you know. Being a baby. Yep. <laughs> the um, the color demos, the, the smoke is really nice, especially with those, you know, chrome accents on the pen. Uh, the smoke looks really, really cool. Um, it's it's a little darker than I thought it might be. Like it's it's very op it's very opaque. Um, the blue is is a very vibrant blue. It's more vibrant than I thought it would be. I'm used to I have a blue custom 74 and a pilot custom 74, and that is a blue uh, demonstrator as well. But the Twisby one is more vibrant than the custom 74. Um, and then the other one is the amber which is an orange that leans a little bit yellow, but is definitely a noticeable yellow orange. orange yeah. yeah. It looks um, a lot oranger in, well, It looks a little know. oranger in real life than it came across in pictures. Yellows and oranges are real tough to take accurate pictures of. But the, uh, the, that one seems to be a little more transparent, a little more translucent mm -hmm. than the others. But they are, honestly, they're all really nice colors. Um, now, one question I did get about the Twisbees is that the italic nibs themselves come with clear grip sections on the nib mm -hmm. and the uh, the colored demonstrators obviously have colored nib sections and so people have been asking like you know well, do you I have to use a, pen, I, I want, want a smoke pen a nib. yeah exactly they want a pen to match their grip section which makes sense but you can actually take the nib out of the grip section it's really pretty easy and you can put it in the one from the colored demonstrators and you can have everything match I am intending to do a video on it, but as you can see here, it's hard to even get this video done, and this isn't even <laughs> of the quality of what I would normally try to do for a video. So my time right now is just like, forget about it. So I'm gonna try next week to really pound out some more videos on Twisbees, and I've got several other things, Edison's and stuff that I wanna cover. Um, that's another thing I forgot to mention about in the um, the post, that I, the, the, the topics post. Yeah, we got the Herald's, um, uh, which is did a recent edition. I did not. I forgot. Oops. Yeah. But anyway, the Herald is now, uh, has been taken from Edison's custom line and brought to a production line. He has made a few modifications to the grip section and the taper on the body of the pen, but looks really nice. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with him. He's got some really interesting materials that I tried to photograph well, but in, in real life they pop a lot more as, you know, almost everything does. But I tried to capture at least some of what you can expect for these pens. So um, the new Heralds, those are out, and those are um, you know the recent, most recent offering from Edison. Edison's got some other things in the works. We're working on another collaborative pen with Brian Gray. A new Gray. Edison Nouveau. A new Edison Nouveau, and it's going to have a few little surprises in there for you. We won't divulge anything yet. It's still in the prototyping stage. Probably a couple weeks away. Yeah. I'd say maybe by early March if things go well. Yeah, yeah. So look for that at some point. Um, and then I think he's also developing another pen, right? Uh, another production pen. Another production pen. Oh, so we should have two new Edisons in the next uh, month or two. Yes. yes. Very excited. Yeah, we're really excited we're about that. Finally the... at like prototype stage and seeing our, our concept come together is mm -hmm. really neat. Yes. And then towards the end of this month, February, we should be getting in VAC 700s as well. That's the plan. For all you Twisby fans. That's, That's the, the plan. plan. The, the VAC 700 has been pushed back many, many, many times already. And I have no idea what the quantities will be. I don't know if it'll be, you know, just like this release where we only got just a smidge of what we wanted and sold out right away, or if the quantities will be plentiful. I, I don't know yet. Yeah. Same um, with the Micarta. We'll know closer till the end of the month. The Micarta, I don't even think, has a, has an, a release date yet. The spring. Yeah. It's, it's a ways off, so... You've got time to save up for that one. <laughs> Does Brian hand turn those, or are they computerized lathes? It's a combination. They're, yeah. He uses the lathes for all the detail work, and then he basically does like the, the finish, the finish work. work, the polishing, and all that stuff by hand. So it's kind of a combination of both. He's talked about that in past broadcasts. Um, let's see here. He said, our production offering has exploded in the last several months. Making it very hard to decide what to buy. <laughs> well, we're trying. That's our job, isn't it? We, if we don't offer it, then, you know. Well, I mean, I guess you could get it elsewhere, but 
Uh, we figure <laughs> if we offer it, then at least you have some options. Exactly. And uh, that gives us more stuff to talk about and more stuff for everybody else to talk about. Um, the um, Let's see here. What else do we have? We got some other new stuff, too, that's coming. Can you talk about Pelican and Sailor and all that and Platinum? No, I haven't talked about any of that yet. Oh, okay. Okay. So let's talk about that. Pelicans. We're bringing in some more pelicans. We Previously brought in some more pelicans. Brought in. Yeah, they we actually just today. we just got them in today after I did the post this morning. So you don't even know that I have some of these pens here to show you right now. Well, if you read the newsletter, you'd know we got them in. Yeah. Or if looked on our website. <laughs> yep. So we have some pens here. Um, some ones that are kind of, you know, mid to mid-high range. Not mid-high mid-level mid-level i would call them mid-level range mm -hmm. they're not student pens not entry-level pens but they're mid-range you know they're in that hundred dollar range mm -hmm. you know so these are a little bit nicer pens you're gonna get some more uh some nicer finish work some you know nicer filling mechanisms and stuff um but you know we had people kind of asking us about pelicans and we've always been, always been kind of interested in carrying more pelican pens because we've been fans of them um, but they're kind of ubiquitous. You can get them a lot of different places. And, um, you know, there were some, uh, you know, reservations we had about jumping into the more expensive pens too soon. Yeah, and someone made a comment, don't expand too fast. It's a downfall of many a business. We, we try yeah. to grow organically. And as we have the cash available and, you know, we never do anything on debt. So it's only as, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we grow only as we have the financial means to do so. And as our customer base matches the level of what we're bringing in, you know, we try to listen to what you guys want. Um, we asked, you know, which pens, you know, and a lot of people said the M200 series and mm -hmm. it seemed like a no brainer. Yeah. Um, had we done this six months or a year ago, it wouldn't have made sense. Um, yeah, but we're now exactly. at the point where we're just, we're inching in. So exactly. And now that we're, we're trying to be smart, we're developing <laughs> more tools like the nib nook. And I've got a few other tools in mind for the things that we're going to develop that are more pen related, um, to help to kind of bridge the gap, just like we've done with ink, um, of, you know, oh, baby girl's asleep now. Um, Getting there. Almost. <laughs> Almost. We, we, we try as online retailers to really bridge that gap between, you know, the computer screen and a pen in your hand. And we develop all kinds of tools like the Nib Nook and the Swab Shop and all that stuff. Selling so, ink samples. Yes, yes. So we're trying to develop a lot more pen related stuff. We have some ideas of things we want to accomplish this year. So beyond yes. the Nib Nook. Um, I have grand plans. It's just a matter of plans. finding time to do it. Um, but so we have some M200 range stuff. We have the 200, the 205, and the 215. Mm -hmm. And we'll go over the differences between the three. Yes. Um, so to start off, we have the M200, which is actually a fairly small pen. It um, comes in for me. two colors, um, an mm -hmm. all black and the green marble, which has a black cap. Which is really nice. It's got like a kind of a green pearlescent swirl thing going on with it. Now, granted, this camera is not the greatest to show it, but um, there you go. So It has a gold trim. Yes. And a gold-plated steel nib. It has an ink window in here. I don't know if you can see that too well. The ink window is right there. It's so dark. So this whole thing right here is an ink window. Don't um, worry about staining. The pen is postable. <laughs> That's true. And it is a piston filler. There you go. Which is really nice because to get... I mean, aside from the Twisby, there's really not a pist lot of piston fillers in this price range. Usually, you see piston fillers in much more expensive pens. But to get a piston filler around $100 is pretty nice. That's why these, I think that's a lot of why these M200s are so popular. Um, steel nib. I haven't had a chance to ink it up and write with them yet, but I will be doing that for the nib nook, and I will give you my opinion then of what I think of these. But I will say the Pelican nibs tend to be a little bit on the broader side. If you're used to more of the Japanese things like Pilot Sailor, Namiki, things like that, these are gonna be probably a full size larger than the Japanese nibs. Mm -hmm. so German. Take that into so. account, yeah. Then you have the uh, M205, which mm -hmm. is basically built on the 200, but it has chrome silver uh, colored trimmings. And uh, the nib is silver colored as well. Yep. Same kind of thing. You can see the ink window a little clearer on this one. Uh, there you go. So it's really nice. And actually, it's a little more, the ink window is a little more translucent. In fact, you can kind of see through it. Mm -hmm. You can see Rachel's face there a little bit. And this one comes in red, white, and black. 
Mm -hmm. And this has same steel nib, but it's a, uh, you know, chrome colored. So same price as the M two hundred. Yeah, you may have always wondered why you see M two hundred, M two hundred five. The main difference is the trim okay. color and some of the color of the bodies. Then you have the M two fifteen, which there's three of those. These have a metal body, um, chrome mm -hmm. or you know silver color trim. These I are, can't remember the metal. Yeah, but these, these are, are pretty cool. Black metal with uh, silver different accents. I can't remember the metal either. Um, yeah. So this one's just mm -hmm. called black, and it just has rings around it. Yeah. These are, these ones are definitely way more than the other ones. Um, this one is black and rectangle, so it has kind of a little rectangular pattern going around it. Yeah, kind of neat. I think it's pretty cool. Kind of artistic. Um, these have the ink windows in them, too. It's got that same really dark ink window that the M200 has, but it's there. And then... The last one is kind of this. Was it the lozenge? Yeah. I'm sure there's a better way to pronounce it. Yeah. Well, we have the italic stub nibs for the 200 series pens. Um, so what we decided to do is we just have the pens right now, which um, the 200 comes in fine, medium, broad, and the 205 and 215 come in extra fine, fine, medium, broad. Nib units are available separately. Um, mm -hmm. So we, I've had some people ask us already. So we'll probably um, carry those at, at some point. I wasn't quite ready to stock them right away, and they, they have yeah. some obliques and other things too, just because it's a lot of money to invest in a lot of different things. But um, if you want one, let me know, and we can just put it in our next order and get that for you. It won't, won't be a problem yeah. at all. And I, I could see us eventually uh, carrying them regularly. Just right now, just was mm -hmm. you know trying to watch the dollars. <laughs> yeah. Another thing nice about these Pelican pens is just like the Edisons, the Tachias, and things that we've shown in the past, um, if you take and you can kind of grip your fingers on the whole nib unit, it uh, actually just unscrews right out of the pen. So that's what we say that's when we talk about... That's how they change out the nib Yeah, unit. that's what we talk about when we say that the nib units are interchangeable. It's the whole nib and feed together, and it just unscrews right out of the pen, which frankly, if you're looking to clean out the pen very thoroughly, this is a better way to do it, because typically with piston fillers, they're a little harder to clean, but um, when you can remove the nib like this, it helps out tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also buy, and we will look to make these available at some point, um, just the nib units themselves. And then you could always buy just one pen, get several nib units, and kind of swap it out if you get bored. And again, if we don't regularly offer it, we can special order for you, no problem. Yeah, but I don't think it's going to be too long before we start to carry them regularly. Yeah. Now she's asleep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for sticking it through with us. <laughs> Getting pretty hairy there for a minute. Hopefully we didn't lose everybody in the audio podcast. But if you're still here, thumbs up to you. Okay. <laughs> Put a little disclaimer at the beginning. Say, skip forward to, you know, whatever minutes <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah, I would edit it out. But as you can see, we barely have the time to do this podcast at all. So um, editing just adds even more time. Okay, so... That covers all that we are bringing in for Pelican right for now. the moment. I can now, see getting into the 400s and working yeah. our way up. Um, again, I, I keep saying we can order anything that's available in Pelican in the USA. We've done M800s and you know M1000s and stuff for folks. So um, I think 600. So just because it's not on our site doesn't mean we can't get it. So mm -hmm. just send us an email. Happy to do it for you. Yep. Um, let's move on to uh, Platinum, since I have Platinum next in line here. Um, oh, we don't have all the Platinum ones in yet. Well, we don't have them in yet, but we are going to be getting yeah. them in. I'm we're placing my to, order tomorrow. They should be in Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, we're going to expand into the Platinum 3776 line. Mm -hmm. um, we have carried the Platinum 3776 Matosu, the limited edition and demonstrator. The music pen. Yes, and the 3776 Music Pen which is their italic nib, uh, um, and they're great pens, and we're going to just kind of expand upon those. They make um, a black and a burgundy in both a steel and a gold nib. We'll be carrying the steel nib one. Right. And then there's a new one called the Century. It's basically the Matosu, but with an all-black body, so it's got that um, won't-dry-out-for-two-years um, technology on the cap mm -hmm. that's supposed to not dry out your ink. Yeah. Or the ink, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> not dry out the ink in the pen yeah so i think that's where the gold nibs are going mm -hmm. i think they're going to all go towards that century design so we're just going to and start carrying that mm -hmm. um so look for those and then we also have the modern maquille which brian has one yes 
these are really cool. Um, they are maquillé. They're not pure maquillé, like not all hand-done maquillé. They're partially... Um, partially machined, partially hand-done. Yeah, partially machined and like silkscreen type process on there. But then there is some handwork done, like especially in these red flowers here. Um, this is a really, really nice look to the pen. You get a lot of that maquillé look but at like a tenth the price of this true one is, um, We'll have two designs. This one's called Phoenix, and then there's another one that's mm -hmm. crane. It has two cranes on it. These have gold nibs. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say list price is around 180 or something. Mm -hmm. um, can't Which, remember exactly. all things considered, given... Gold nib, maquillé, yeah. not bad. Yeah. Um, it's a very, very attractive pen. It is metal. Um, it does have a little bit of weight to it, but it's a very thin pen, um, small. Oh, this is comfortable. So it's, it's not that heavy. Yeah, exactly. It's got weight to it, but it's not so much weight that it would be obtrusive. It's more, it has weight and it just feels nice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I like pens that have a little bit of weight to them. But, you got that nice uh, um, click Yes. in the cap. Yeah, it's not a screw. It's a click. Um, yes, this is a cartridge converter. I don't even know that... I don't think Platinum has a piston fill pen at all. I, I think, think all, all of Platinum's, of Platinum's are, pens are a cartridge converter. Your normal Platinum converter. Yep. It does come with one. So there you go. So I'm excited about that one because I've actually had this for a little while and um, it just looks beautiful. I mean, I there's not a lot of pens that I just look at a lot, but this one is one of them. I think it's just because I don't have pens with a lot of artwork on them. And mm -hmm. this one is just really nice, and the Japanese definitely know their art. So, um, okay, so that is Platinum. Sailor. The, um, Sailor. Okay, let's go on to Sailor. We, uh, you know, Sailor has a lot of high-end pens, and, of course, uh, mm -hmm. they have a lot of nib sizes, so, you know, financially it just wasn't feasible to do everything. So we started out with the 1911 standard size um, in black and clear, and we figured... Well, we, we debated. We said, should we do a couple nibs and do a lot of colors or do just a couple colors and a lot of nibs? So we decided just to do the black and the clear um, with all yep. the nibs. Um, so you have extra fine, fine, medium fine, medium, broad, and music. Um, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Brian has a uh, large I have version. A, I have a large version, actually, that's identical collection. to this one. So I can show you the difference between the two sizes. It's not going to look very dramatic on the webcam because you can't see a whole lot of detail but you can see a little bit of the difference I'll put them like starting at the same point and we'll, we'll show you a couple of these compared to each other so you can get some better references yeah the one on the top here is the large this is the 1911L and this is the 1911S the standard um, The it's a little bit longer but that's not the biggest difference it's the diameter that you really notice the difference the size of the cap the size of the grip section and then the size of the nib as well. Is the nib different? It is. You can see here. Oh yeah. The difference between the standard and the large. Um, that's a big difference. Nib. Now, granted, mine large nib is dirty, but <laughs> there you go. So that's the difference between the two. But then again, the large is like twice the price. Almost. Exactly. So we're starting with the standard. Yeah. Um, you know, they're they're nice classic pens. A lot of people, uh, you know, use them as reference points. We're trying to get into some more some more staple pens. I mean, we've been carrying a lot of things that are maybe harder to find elsewhere or aren't necessarily as popular elsewhere, and um, we've had some pretty good success with the pens. And you know, we like things that are a little quirky or interesting, but um, we're trying to get into a little more classic ones just because we get asked a lot of questions about like how nibs compare to the 1911 or the M200? How does the size compare to the M200 or M400? You know, so we're trying to get more into those now pens that we just have because... the nib nook too. Exactly. So the nib nook is only going to be that much stronger of a reference as we expand oh, into our pens. price point. Um, these are the oh, same yeah. uh, price as the Sailor Sapporo, the uh, Pro Gear Slim. So list price is $195. We'll have it for $156. Yes. 20% off. Sailor has a pretty dynamite reputation for their nibs. Mm -hmm. Very smooth, great flow. Um, are they 14 carat or 21 carat? These are 14 carat. And someone asked, have we ever written yep. with any of the really unusual Sailor nibs? Just I have music. a music nib, um, which is quite a bit different than the platinum music nib. The platinum music nib mm -hmm. is more like a, a large stub. It's very rounded, very, very smooth. 
the um, Sailor music nib is narrower. It's not, not as wide as the Platinum music nib. And it's a little sharper. It's a little crisper. Um, so I would call this more of an italic than a stub. They have a Zoom nib, which I heard isn't... Um, I didn't order those because they're not available in the U.S. anymore, I don't think. Mm. Or something. I can't remember what the situation was. Um, yeah, then there's some other stuff. And, and a lot of these Japanese companies, there are some different nib sizes available, but only in Japan. U.S. doesn't always import everything, so sometimes they're hard to come by. Mm -hmm. That's um, definitely true of Pilot. Yeah. Speaking of. Speaking of which, we have the Pilot Custom 823. This is, is a pen, pen. this is a pen that I got pretty excited about because I am a big fan of the Custom 74, which I actually have right here. And you're a fan of interesting filling methods. Yes, absolutely. Well, here's the Custom 74. This is my famous blue Custom 74 that, that, I, use, have with that I use all the time. And I love it. I just really mm -hmm. love it. And it is a, it's a cartridge converter, but it has the Con 70 converter, which is this like button filler. And it kind of uses like a vacuum button combo. And it's, it's larger capacity than your standard um, converter. Con 50 or Con 20. Right. And it, it flows really well. It doesn't have the hang up like the Con 50 converters are known to have sometimes but anyway i love the nib on it it writes really well smooth nib you know it's got a little bit of softness to it um and so a bit of spring i'd heard good things about the custom 823 um i didn't realize actually how much larger the custom 823 was than the custom 74 here are the two side by side which the custom 74 itself is a pretty long pen but the mm -hmm. A23 makes it actually kind of look a little bit smaller, both in girth and length. And um, definitely the A23 is heftier as well. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing about the A23 is that it's a vacuum filler. And I had read up on vacuum fillers, but this is actually the first one I've ever really held in my hand to see how it works. It's really pretty cool. So basically, the whole body fills up with ink. And it's got... <clears throat> this uh, cap here that you unscrew and I don't know how well you can see on this webcam but as you not well. not well okay well as you lift up this plunger pulls up and then you can see you know the whole empty body of the pen so what happens is you kind of pump this thing back and forth and as you pump it the pressure changes inside here and it draws ink up into the full body of the pen so it's a tremendous ink capacity and the filling mechanism stays inside the whole pen. Um, and it's got a lot of a lot of heft to it, a lot of weight, girth, you know, it's it's just a really really a pretty large pen. I don't even know how well you would like this, Rachel. It almost is probably too large for you. Try without the cap. Unposted, I could do it. It's it's heavy. It's pretty girthy, yeah. Yeah. The 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 the, the diameter doesn't bother me so much. It's just a little heavy. Okay. And like the nib even, I mean, on the Custom 74, granted the Custom 74 nib is not huge. I do like writing with the Custom 74. We, we're always fighting over this one. Yeah, it's lighter. It's definitely it's, lighter. It's more comfortable for me. Yeah, but the nib size difference between the Custom 74 and the A23 is pretty dramatic. I mean, look at that difference. Yeah. It's very stunning. Um, and you get a bottle of ink with the uh, A23 as well. Yeah, that's the other thing. Pilot um, Blue. Yeah, it, it's a bottle of ink that's not available on its Definitely. own. It's only available with the Custom 823, um, which is kind of annoying in my opinion because I like to have availability of <laughs> everything when when we want it. You can take your computer. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, show point. you this. Let me show you this bottle. Okay. And I'll show you the packaging for the 823 because it's really pretty nicely done. So it comes in this rather sizely box. And you can see pictures of this on our website too. I took pictures of the box because I thought it was worth it. So a nice solid box with Pilot logo. So you take it out, you get you know some stuff falling out of it. But it's got like this really nice presentation with like this gray, you know, satiny type of material on the inside. It's got, it holds the pen in here like so. The pen just kind of like clips in there for a really nice presentation. And then it's got this bottle of ink, which is a 70 mil bottle. Um, 
it's a tremendous bottle and it's even got a one of those plastic reservoirs inside there mm. to help to fill it and it that's I, a good amount of ink it's honestly a beautiful bottle that's yeah 70 cool. mil 70 mil is a good amount of ink it's almost as large as a bottle of diamine so um and i've read reviews of this ink that it's pretty awesome as well i don't know i haven't tested it myself yet i don't know if it's the same as namiki blue I am not I've heard certain. mixed things. Some people say it's different. Some people think it's the same. So we'll just have yeah. to uh, snag one for ourselves and do a test. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, due to the fact that you only get a bottle of ink with each pen, we're not going to be able to offer it in samples. Yeah. But if I am able to steal one of these pens for my own personal use, if Rachel will allow me, then I will be able to swab up the ink. Just have to decide what nib you want. I'm pretty sure I want the medium, which is mm. just what I happen to bring home here today. Oh, funny how just, that works. Just kind of convenient how that worked. Um, Although I think but, we only have one in stock right now. So it is. Hopefully, it, no one. No hopefully, nobody it. bought it since we came home. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I've had my eye on this for a while. It is a little bit more expensive pen. Now, granted, it does have a gold nib, um, and I did the right testing with the um, nib nook, and I do like the nib. I will say that the fine nib on this custom seventy or the custom eight twenty four, eight twenty three, is amazingly fine. Like the the fine nib on the Prera, and the eight twenty three are the finest fine nibs I've ever used. Mm. So if you like really really fine nibs, you know if you're on a budget, go for the fine Prera. If you're not on a budget, go for the custom eight twenty three. Um, I wish it was available in other colors. It's only available in this amber, which they call amber, but it's really more of like a brown. brown. It's not like the it's Twisby amber brown. at all. It's a light brown, which is not an ugly color. Oh, I would yeah, prefer... Oh, comparison with the VAC 700 for sure. That's exactly why I have such an interest in this pen, is because the Twisby VAC 700 is going to be coming out. The, it's undoubtedly going to be compared to this thing, because other than like the older Parkier Vacumatics and stuff... The Custom A23 is really the only vac filler that I can recall right now. I think there are some others out there, but they're, you know, maybe really, really expensive, you know, stipulas and stuff like that um, that are, like, in a different league. You said some places call this smoke. I could see this being called smoke. Um, it's kind it's of a brown a, smoke. Yeah, it's not a black or gray. It's definitely a brown. Yeah. Um, so it's only one color, only gold accents. But really nice pen, and it's got a really good reputation too. So, if you're interested in the 823, I've been impressed with it so far. Um, the retail price for the uh, 823 it lists for uh, 360. 360. We have it for 288. Yeah, 288. 20 so off. it's not cheap. It's not no. cheap. I'm not gonna lie. It is an investment, but. You if got the you, gold nib, you got, you know. If you're a fan of the Pilot nibs, and if you have used a Custom 74 before and like it, I can guarantee you'll like an 823. So, there you go. Uh, what else have we got here? Ellie's kind of throwing a fit again. Um, we won't update stick around. Update on the Ahab real quick. Yeah, the Ahabs. Um, They're about <laughs> two to three weeks away. There's not much um, to update. We don't have a definite date yet. Yeah, you know, shipping gets delayed and such. Um, but they are on the way. They're definitely on the way. Um, just looking probably a little later this month. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's all we know. So nothing too much new on the Ahabs, but we did want to keep you up to date that, you know, we do talk with the distributor regularly, and when they are going to become available, we are going to let you know. Absolutely. Um, Waterman ink name changes. Yeah, this is we've gotten a lot of emails about this. Apparently We found out through FPN. Yeah, apparently back in October, Waterman changed the names of the all packaging. of their inks. Yes, excuse me, their names and the packaging of all of their inks. So now instead of Waterman Florida Blue, you have Waterman what's the official name for it now? Serenity Blue. Serenity I was like, Blue. Serenity now. Yeah, Serenity Blue. So, and now, you know, they've changed red. They've changed all, you know, they've like tender purple now instead of purple. So, I guess as they're, they're trying to rebrand it, you know, everybody's kind of making a joke about it on Fountain Pen Network, and we're kind of, you know. Uh, some of the names are just, I'll, I'll say this. Some of the names stupid. are, some of the names are, are, you know. Tender purple? Some of the names are, are. Audacious red. Could have been done better, in my opinion, but 
what's most confusing is the fact that they changed this back in October and they never told any of the retailers about it. And or at least no they didn't tell us about it. Whether the color changed or if it was just name change. Yeah, there was. Um, it was honestly, in my opinion, it was a total botched job on their marketing. They didn't for, even for, tell us until for a rebranding. We, we told them, "Hey, FPM's saying this, and you're sending us these things. Is this the same ink?" And uh, so they sent us their whole PowerPoint presentation of their whole branding initiative. But we had to ask them for it, and it's four months after the fact. But we haven't gotten like we were still getting old ink, so like obviously they still had to work through it. Um, so far, the blue, the Florida blue. Um, the red and the purple we've switched over. So I've mm. updated our website accordingly. So as we get the new ones in, you'll see us change it. Um, we've swapped all of them up as they've come in. They look the same to us. We can't tell a difference. Yeah. yeah. So. So I will be replacing. I will will be replacing pictures of those on uh, the swap shop with the actual new names. So uh, to avoid any confusion, I may even leave the old ones up there. I don't know. That might be really confusing. I think because they've officially changed the names, it's not worth it. It just it befuddles me why they would change the names of something as, frankly, as popular and as much a staple in the ink world as the Waterman Even Florida like Blue and the Havana Waterman. Havana Brown going to Absolute Brown. Like, what? Yeah, I mean, it's just, for, for doing a rebranding like that and then not even really telling anybody about it, it just confuses me as to why that, that happened. But Yeah, we can reference old names. A lot of them just went from, you know, red purple black to having some sort of adjective in front of it yeah um florida blue and south sea blue obviously are different but yeah the right re- the rest you'll be able to tell i can't remember all the names yeah but just be end. aware that the ink itself didn't change it was just the names in the packaging so it's been creating a little bit of confusion out there but New Coke. you know a lot of people were kind of nervous because you know south sea blue and florida blue are like really popular you know they're re- kind of a staple in mm-hmm. the fountain pen world but you know the ink is the same it's just the name that's been changed so undoubtedly it's going to be confusing because the last 10 years of posts you have on the fountain pen network talking about waterman florida blue everybody's going to go out there looking for florida blue and they're not going to find it so i don't know maybe we could have like the name and then put the old name in parentheses i, or I something. was going to like you know for, that one makes sense but like i don't want to say like audacious red parentheses red like that sounds dumb maybe or maybe we could just put like a line of text in there saying formerly I, known as I did. You did? Mm-hmm. Look at you. Okay. So anyway. But again, we're only going to change them as our stock changes. Yeah. So if you see the old name on our site, that's what we have. Yeah. So anyway, that is that. So again, so far everything we've swabbed up has looked identical. And we've had everyone in our shop look at it too to make sure it wasn't just like us seeing things. And like everyone, no one could tell the difference. So. Yeah. So that is that. Yep. Um, we already talked about the A23s and then really... The only other thing we wanted to cover tonight is not really anything thorough, but I wanted to introduce you to um, the UV ink torture test. Um, Jamie Grossman is the blogger behind Hudson Valley Sketches, um, and uh, she does a really good job of um, using fountain pen inks for mixed media type stuff, watercolor washing and things like that, and really kind of expands the horizon and pushes the boundaries a little bit of what you can do with fountain pen ink. It's not just something to be used in a fountain pen, but she'll take an ink and use a fountain pen with it and then take a watercolor brush and kind of, you know, swipe over it to get, you know, um, alternate colors and stuff to come out of the ink. She's got some really interesting stuff, so go check out Hudson Valley Sketches um, and you'll see, you'll see some of her work. But really what, what the test is all about is she does a lot of art stuff. And typically art, you want to display it. Um, and for any of you who've used fountain pens for a while, you know that typically you want to keep fountain pen ink out of direct sunlight. So the problem you run into when using fountain pen ink for artwork is that if you're displaying it in a place where it gets direct sunlight, it's going to fade, it's going to you know, change colors, it's going to have some issues like that. So um, she kind of on her own was just testing random inks that she happened to have across all brands um, to see how it would stand up with UV uh, exposure. So she would do swabs and stuff you know, down a sheet of paper. She'd cut the sheet in half, hang half of it up you know, in her you know, window in her house, and then the other half she'd keep in, you know, hidden away. 
and she'd pull it out every month or, you know, as the test went on, I think she went up to six months or something on, on some of the inks, um, to see how bad it faded with direct UV exposure. And it's really interesting to see which inks hold up and which ones don't. Some of them, it's pretty amazing. Now, I will say that there's a caveat that, you know, when you're talking about fountain pen ink, these are dye-based inks that really are not intended for direct UV exposure at all. So the fact that they fade and, and you know, stuff like that and maybe shift colors or change colors is really not surprising or shocking at all. You know, I don't think that, you know, uh, having uh, your fountain pen ink displayed up in a, win in a window for six months, you know, and have it not change color should be an expectation with fountain pen inks. But um, that's a pretty harsh test, but it is interesting to see what it does and kind of push the limits there. Um, so, well, yeah, six months is not enough for fine art. I agree, but then again, you know, how would we ever know? <laughs> well, you're talking about you're talking about dye, but anybody anybody who displays art knows that you don't use dye based stuff. I would imagine. Well, and you and know that if it's fades and it's gone in six months, it's certainly not going to last. There are there are years. some fountain pen inks like um, I can't remember. There's one famous one um, that's known for fading after like two days or three days. It's a blue. I can't remember it. What was the site again? Um, Hudson um, Valley Sketches? Hudson Valley Sketches. Yeah. It's a... Uh, I can't remember. Just Google Hudson Valley Sketches and get the link. And if you can post it in the chat. We'll post it it's on the linked, blog. It's a... I'm it's, actually going to be... It's in our blog list on our site. Okay. I'm actually going to be posting a blog about all this that I'm talking about right now on Friday. Um, and then... HudsonValleySketches.blogspot.com There you go. She does some really cool stuff. Um, she's actually more an acrylic painter by trade. Um, she's an artist, but she does this, um, the sketch stuff, just kind of for fun. And um, she does some really cool stuff. So anyway, check so that look out. For, it, the post is coming, what, next week? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to post that thing on Friday. And actually, I've been talking with Jamie, and she... Um, anyway, where I was getting with this whole thing is that, yeah. you know, um, fountain pen ink, UV exposure, all that stuff. Well, Noodlers has um, a line of inks called Eternal Inks, which are touted to be UV resistant. Not UV proof, but UV resistant. And I wanted to see in at least somewhat of a, of a practical test, I'll call it a practical test, but in a real it's life test, a if a real, in a real life test, if the Noodlers UV resistant inks withstood UV exposure better than most typical fountain pen inks. So um, I contacted Jamie and I said, hey, I saw you did this test thing with some of your inks. Would you be interested in doing a test with these Noodler's inks if I supply them for you? So she agreed to it. I sent her all the eternal inks we have, which is 32 at the time. Um, and so she swabbed up all 32 and has had them in her window for about a month. Um, and, and you can start to tell some of the colors are kind of um, you know, uh, starting to do some interesting things. So, um, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to plan to have Jamie on our broadcast next week. Um, so she can talk about watercolor washing and what she does with fountain pen ink stuff. Cause I think it's just really fascinating. We have a lot of questions about, um, inks that are good for watercolor washing mm -hmm. or, you know, some that will, uh, be waterproof some that aren't and uh, you know we're not artists and we're learning we learn from yeah. you guys and she's a um, big she's a big fan of Stillman and Byrne uh, sketchbooks um, and I've actually contacted them and we're kind of in talks right now about possibly carrying some of their um, sketchbooks because they're you know we do have kind of a following of watercolor artists and you know more sketch artists and stuff and and, and it's seen it's it's a whole different world I realize that we cater mostly to fountain pen users well, almost exclusively to fountain pen users, mm -hmm. but we, we, there's a lot of fountain pen users that are using them for artistic purposes and watercolor washing. Especially the and flex really pens, love, my goodness. Yeah, we really love, yeah, the flex pens have done a lot to um, expose uh, fountain pens to artists. Mm -hmm. So um, we're trying to dive into that world just a little bit more, and Jamie's a really good resource um, for us to learn more about that. And um, so we're going to plan on having her on the broadcast next week by phone. 
and um, she's going to talk about this test, talk about some of the results that she's seen um, after the first month of these things hanging in the windows, maybe talk about some of her sketchbooks and watercolor books and just kind of what her experiences are as an artist. Because um, I think she's an I think she's an artist by trade. That's that they believe that's how she makes her living. So it's pretty cool. Um, but uh, we email back and forth all the time. I have great respect for what she does on her blog. You know, I appreciate the work she puts into it because I I know what it <laughs> I know what goes into it. Um, but anyway, so anyone interested, um, Jamie Grossman will be on. She um, did a post. Um, if you go to her blog, January eighteenth, mm -hmm. uh, to show what ink she tested. Yeah, um, I'm basically going to be reposting that with some of my own thoughts and. Uh, and things about the test and all that. So um, I'm going to be reposting a lot of that on Friday. So that's going to be cool. Um, yeah. Speaking of notebooks, uh, I figure since the catalogs are going out soon, we can share some of the new Execlair stuff coming? Um, we can, but it's still going to be a ways off. So. I know it's going to be a ways off, but a lot of people are asking, um, you know, if they're ever going to make X product or, you know, we know what's yeah, coming sure. and therefore we know what isn't. Sure, yeah, we, we don't have to get too much into it, but since Ellie is quiet, we might as well try and get in a word when we can. <laughs> yeah, so we got a sneak peek at the Execlair catalog, which is the, uh, the the U.S. distributor for Rodia, Clairefontaine, Clovatis, uh, Jerobon, a couple other brands. Um, some new products we saw. Um, the dot pads are going to be available with orange covers now. Um, Rodia Drive already published that, so that, that shouldn't be new information. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to come out with a number 18 size. Um, which is brilliant. I don't know yes, why they didn't you. do that in the first place instead of the 19. Thank you. So they'll have the 12, the 16, and the 18 now. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, they're going to make dot pad top wire bound notebooks. So again, the same size as orange and black. Um, we'll have dot grid paper. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. So now you have a new format of, of the dot paper if you like that. Um, there's a new web notepad. It's like a small webby but top bound um it's like it of, seems like a steno webby basically. yeah so we're curious so, to see interesting. that it's, it's, it's interesting. only small They're we do like, get a lot of requests for steno like pads three by four and like a three and a half by five and a half or something like I'll, that. I'll be interested to see if the page with dot with dot grid i'll be interested to see if the pages tear out or if it's more like a bound webby it's probably know. it's probably bound but i don't know we haven't seen any of these things so um i did request from execlair to send us some samples so that we can do video reviews on them mm -hmm. um as soon as i get those in it'll be a few weeks before we get any of that but um yeah we are going to be doing that there are no dots in the ivory color paper that's like the r by rhodia the soft touch stuff um no additions to that line i think you know, they didn't know how popular the dots would be at the time they developed the R by Rodia. And, you know, it, it takes a long time to develop new products. So uh, um, maybe next year, maybe later in the year, who knows? Yeah. But I did not see it in the catalog, um, mm -hmm. nor a Webby with white paper or anything like that. So the Webbies are unchanged. I didn't see any changes there. Getting some questions about other lines of notebooks like the Lecturn. Um, I haven't really been too impressed with the reviews I've seen of it. I've never used that paper myself, but since we cater primarily to fountain pens, um, a lot of the reviews I've seen of fountain pens have some, you know, bleed through on the back and some feathering and stuff. Um, I'm open to them, but I would have to really explore them more and kind of be impressed. We, we explore new paper all the time and half the time the paper is just not impressive to us at all. Um, every now and then we run into a paper like, you know, original Crown Mill where we see a lot of potential for fountain pens. Um, but, uh, you know, we are pretty picky when it comes to our paper. Yeah. Ever thought of carrying white lines? White lines is another one I've heard of. I've, I've heard seen some good reviews and I've some seen some mixed stuff. Mixed. I've seen some mixed it stuff. It seems the, the quality is, or, you know. Consistency is really tough to get with yeah. paper. To get cons and that's why that's where Rodia and Claire Fontaine just absolutely shine is that it's all made in the same mill. It's made consistently and sustainably, so it's um, you know exactly what you're getting when you use it. Um, there that's, are a couple um, a couple of new brands of paper that we we got to try out that we're considering carrying this year. Um, one is the Behance Action Planners. We talked about mm -hmm. this briefly last year. We got in some samples, but um, we hadn't got around to testing it yet. Um, the other was Bandit Apple. Is that is that what's called? Yeah, Bandit Apple. That's uh, actually made in Vietnam. 
Um, it's a very interesting notebook because um, it's it's very thin, um, very um, you know Asian style notebook. Um, it has a stitched binding, um, not staple bound or anything like that. Um, it's very thin, but the paper is pretty good, so um, it's more absorbent, um, more textured, more toothy. So mm-hmm. kind of more like original Crown Mill um, cotton. Which means your ink is going to be uh, flatter. You're not going to see as much shading yeah. because it absorbs it more. But it'll be faster drying, which is a big complaint with uh, Rodi and Claire Fontaine. Yeah. Uh, we, so. we haven't expanded too far outside of Rodi and Claire Fontaine before because, you know, we're got... I'm going to say we're kind of spoiled by how good that paper is. Well, other than the and original really... Crown Mill, that was our first venture outside of that. <coughs> right. Which and... has been great. Well, and the thing is, it's um, we're, we're starting to recognize that not everyone who uses a fountain pen necessarily wants, you know, um, that Rodia Clairefontaine experience of really, really smooth paper and, um, you know, a lot of ink repellent. See, I don't think that's a word, but you know, ink repellent nature of the paper. Um, so there are other papers out there that are um, pretty good with fountain pens. It's just a different experience than Rodian Claire Fontaine, and that's what we're starting to explore now. Um, band, yeah, Banded Apple is one. The Behance is another one. Um, Behance is kind of cool, like the Lectern. Beh- what Behance has to offer is more of a format function as well. The paper is pretty good, but it's got a format. Like, for example, it's got a dot grid journal similar to kind of like the Webby, but um, the pages tear out. And it's got some, like, more page layout options and stuff in there. So it's it's kind of interesting. They have, yeah, yeah, they have some, some interesting workflow type products. Um, and then the other one that we're exploring is Pelly. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen Pelly before. They're kind of new onto the scene, but Pelly is made 100% in the U.S. Everything down to like the cellophane wrapping they use is made in the U.S. Mm. Um, and their paper again is kind of like the Banded Apple and the Behance that it's um, you know not it's not completely ink repellent like Rodian Clairefontaine, but it does hold up well. It doesn't bleed and feather and stuff like that, so it works pretty well. And that's those are leather bound journals. Um, more like hand cut stitched leather. Um, so really kind of interesting stuff too. It's kind of a different facet than anything we've ever carried before. So we're really trying to, to look at our options and kind of branch out mm-hmm. in, in paper as well. Um, especially because these are smaller brands that don't have huge offerings in terms of selection. So we're kind of looking and saying, okay, well we can get these because these are kind of cool. And we can get these and maybe, you know, kind of like uh, cherry pick what some of the stuff that we expand into as far as paper goes. Mm. So look for some of that. It's going to be interesting to see what we'll we kind of play with. Goes. Yeah, I've been I've been more impressed as of a, as I've like I've come to my own realization that not There's everything not everything has to be Rodia Clairefontaine to be considered good paper. Um, it's just going to be very different. So mm-hmm. it'll require me to talk more intelligently about the different kinds of paper and really talk about what the experiences are like on the different kind of paper. The, how quickly it dries or the shading mm-hmm. and, you know, the differences like that. Yeah, because we always talk about there's a trifecta between paper, pen, and ink. And changing any one of those three can change your whole writing experience. Even changing your humidity or your writing angle. Or... Yeah, those are all factors. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but the main three is the paper, paper, pen, and ink. Those are the easiest three you you can change. Exactly. Um, It all depends on what you want to use the paper for. Yeah. And you can take the same pen and ink and write on it with two different types of paper and get two completely different writing experiences. Or two different people with all the same thing. Yeah, it's true. Rachel and I, she holds her pens completely different than me and holds them at a different writing angle, which causes a different writing pressure as well. She, my ink looks different. Yeah, her ink doesn't look as saturated as mine, and her lines almost look a whole size smaller, n- smaller than mine just because of I hold my pen a lot lower and use the more pressure higher. than she does. 
So it's really it's really interesting. There's so much there's so much depth to this whole hobby, you know, and there's really so much customization to it. I think that's why we all kind of get so involved into it is because it's there. You can really get an interest, you know, you can really kind of fine tune your experience with the writing, and that's what keeps it. That's what keeps us interested, you know. If it was just a one stagnant thing and it was nice and predictable, you'd be like, okay, well, this is fine, but kind of boring. But we always like to change and discover new things. Um, especially with inks, ink colors and stuff like that. Oh yeah, got more detachment <laughs> is on the way, and yes, and already I have people asking for other colors that didn't order yet, so I could see that expanding again in a couple months. So yes, we'll Southworth, see. yeah, Southworth is another one we heard of. Um, what's another one? Uh, not uh, it sounds like Crown Mill. What's the other Crane? one? Crane. Crane. Crane is another one that we've heard good things about. Mm-hmm. So we're going to explore. We're going to we're going to continue to look a around. A lot of it is going to be dependent on space. Paper takes up a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's actually one of the biggest issues we have, which if you remember, we just moved a couple of months ago, but we're kind of I'm not going to say we're getting tight on space, but we're we will. we're getting tight on easy space. We're going to have to start moving things around and cramming things in if we keep on going like we are. Good problems to have. Of course, getting all new pens and stuff like that doesn't help us in yeah, that respect. Yeah, look at the size of the box of this custom uh, A23 here. Yeah, look at this thing. I mean, well, imagine it storing these. In it. Yeah, imagine <laughs> storing these. You know, you get a good selection and several nib sizes and, you know. The awesome HP 28-pound laser. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> if we could buy it at wholesale prices, that'd be awesome because that's what we use for everything. Yeah, maybe we can talk to them. We're going through enough of it right now. Yeah. <laughs> We that would be tough, though. You can buy that online for much cheaper than we could probably sell it for. No, I mean, Shipping would be the killer with the HP paper. Yeah. That is good stuff, though. A second warehouse. Oh, we might we might consider moving. We may have an opportunity to move, upgrade our space here um, in a little bit. There's nothing definite, but um, we're, we'll exploring, keep you posted. we're exploring our options. It would be several months away, but um, there you go. So, okay, well, that's about it. It's 10.05. We're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you, everybody. Do you got, well, do you guys have any questions? Well, yeah. I was, re- <laughs> I was really trying to stick it to 10 because, you know, I'm tired and I need to call your sister. And Ellie keeps waking up and crying. Yeah, I need to call your but sister I, you before know, I want I don't want it to just be like the us show of us uh, talking everything. I want you guys, you know, I want to make sure if you have questions, you know, you guys are here in the chat, you get answered. Yeah, so we'll take a few minutes if you have anything while I kind of pack up the pens here. <laughs> satellite warehouses Be like we're not Amazon quite at that point centers. Uh, we'll see four months ago we were in I our garage i don't know if i ever want to be that big i don't I, know i think it'd be really hard to maintain the uh mom and pop feel we, we've i feel tough. like with all our employees we've hired we've still done a good job of maintaining our our values and our feel but you know if we ever get to the point we have multiple warehouses and stuff that you know that would be tough that'd be very tough yeah Repeat the name of the U.S. paper company. Pelly, P E L L E. That's Pelly. Um, what is the meaning of life? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> How does Joseph like his new sister? He he, oh, loves, he loves her. her. Baby sister, baby sister sleeping, <laughs> baby sister crying, when baby he, sister Ellie. When she cries, he goes over and tries to console her and like rubs her legs. And <laughs> he doesn't really know what he's doing, but it's absolutely adorable. Yeah, he does love her. Speaking of which, she's stirring again. You might hear her in a second. <laughs> she's got an interesting face. Um, all the colored 540 twist bees have the new Bach nibs. That is correct. The clear are not the same. The clear um, are split. And Brian, in his mailbox number four, answers that. But, uh, yeah, all the new, the colored have the new Bach nibs. Yes, Joseph and Ellie are the meaning of life for us right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Yep, we should sell our packaging supplies. Oh, it's nothing, nothing magical. Bubble wrap and shrink wrap. That's about it. We get them from a source that you can look for online. So <laughs> you just have to yep. buy them in, you know, massive pallet quantities. But you know, mm-hmm. if you ever feel like starting a packaging operation in your garage, you know, you certainly could. Oh, you finally inked up Alt Bordeaux from the last drop. Really nice. Yeah, I'm gonna be talking about. Uh, I'm gonna be coming out with a video on the whole Roger and Klinger line. I'm gonna cover all the inks in just one fell swoop. Uh, I've been posting the video or the the reviews of them. I still have the last two, um, Verdura and um, the the other name is failing me right now. Yeah, Verdigree. Um, so I will be posting those two 
um, probably this weekend. I've got them done. Um, and uh, after that, I'm going to work on the inks for this uh, February ink drop. I'll be posting those. I'm really going to make it my goal to do um, an ink review for every ink drop that, that's coming out in the future, which, you know, won't be as many, won't be 18 like with the Roar and Klingner. It should only be five in the future. But uh, hey, here's a baby girl. And now whatever I say doesn't matter because Ellie's in the picture and she's gonna hands. she's gonna steal the show. <laughs> but no, I am gonna talk about the Roaring Klingner and then um, I've also um, done up reviews of all the Pilot Arusha Zuku. So I will be talking more about those. The whole brand I did them all. So uh, I'll be talking about those in February as well. Yes, her PJs are cute. They say "Daddy, sweetie." That is very true. That is exactly <laughs> what she is. <laughs> Look at that face. That's the face she's had this whole time. This face of like, why are you ignoring me? Look at that face. Hi. <laughs> she's got these bright blue eyes. We never thought that we would have two kids with blue eyes. They're gray. <laughs> well, Joseph's are gray. We don't know what color hers are yet, but we thought for sure because Rachel's got brown eyes. Her whole family has these dark, rich brown eyes. And mine are gray, and we thought for sure that the brown would be dominant, and we'd all we'd have just a slew of kids with brown eyes. But uh, nope, that's not the case. Looks like the blue eyes are. So it's amazing we're not here. taking a year off just to hold her. <laughs> oh, we are holding her quite a bit. Don't you worry about that. We oh, actually, yeah. um, you know, we stayed home a lot the first month that she was born. And last week with all the. And sicknesses. last week with all the sicknesses, but now we're actually commuting to the shop every day. Um, with the whole family, family, all four of us. My office is the playroom. We've mm -hmm. Got a changing table in there, and yep. you can bring a little another swing over, and a yep. little bouncy seat and everything. So it's pretty cool, even though we are commuting Joseph and going to Legos work. Joseph has Legos everywhere, and yeah, even though we're commuting and going <laughs> to work, we we uh, we get to see our family all day. It's pretty cool. And then uh, Joseph loves to run around the shop and. Um, you know, play with ink samples. And Just today he uh, was taking the uh, Exacompta index cards and making them into a tower. Yep. <laughs> so he's pulling them off the shelf and bringing them into the middle of the floor and said, a tower, a tower, and stacking them up. It's pretty And adorable. also pointing out the O. Um, there's like a little circle on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. I was like, what are you talking about? He loves to move like uh, large mail bins around the shop and rearrange packing tape. He's playing with rodeo pads and... and as soon as he got them, I was like, oh, bottom shelf. <laughs> Yeah, if you see random rhodia pads bottom shelf, it's because we keep some of those pads lower where Joseph can reach them. And Sometimes he gets a hold of yeah. them. <laughs> he also is playing with a bottle of pen flush. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on him sometimes. <laughs> He's pretty good, though. Hey, Ellie. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, goodness. Yep. It's a fun time. We're enjoying it. Absolutely. Yep. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and um, wrap up this broadcast because we've got other things to do uh, right now. But uh, thank you all for joining us. We had a great time. And face again. Let me see oh, Ellie. No. Oh, she's all upset. Oh, no. <laughs> oh goodness. So anyway, we will see you. We're going to be back here next week with Jamie Grossman. Um, we're going to talk about whatever new stuff that we have to talk about, as well as Noodler's UV inks and um, watercolor washing. So it'll be a, a different kind of broadcast than we do, but it's always fun to have a guest on. So thanks, everybody. We had a great time. Um, we'll have this uh, recorded in a podcast as well, if you'd like, um, and as well as um, posted a video on YouTube. So thanks, everybody, and we will uh, see you next week. <laughs>